Hi guys, in today's video I would like to show you how you can make your own STM32 based IoT device that uses ESP8266 Wi-Fi module and uh, in my case uh, I have used this uh, humidity sensor that reads uh, relative humidity uh, which is called uh, AHT15 and uh, this STM32 board uh, hosts a very, very simple uh, web page. Uh, it's a very simple web hosting uh, that uh, gives you as a response this uh, humidity reading. So uh, when you see a green LED flash uh, on this STM32 board, it happens every 30 seconds. It means that uh, the humidity uh, is being read and uh, on this uh, ESP8266 module uh, blue LED should flash also every 30 seconds and it is independent uh, and this web page is automatically reloaded every 30 seconds as well. So this uh, HTML code on this uh, web page has a metadata that uh, automatically updates the web page every 30 seconds and the sensor independently is being uh, read every 30 seconds as well so anytime you can uh, get uh, current data reading so this is how it works and uh, after I will explain the code uh, uh, you can modify it, the update frequency of the sensor, uh, uh, auto-refresh frequency of this uh, web page. Uh, I will also explain uh, how you can set up your own DDNS uh, uh, on your router. So let's get started. So let's start explaining this wiring diagram. Uh, so this uh, relative humidity sensor AHT15 uses 3.3 volts uh, as a power supply and uh, this uh, I2C for communication so that's why I had to place these two 10k resistors there and this ESP8266 module uses UART uh, as a peripheral uh, as well as uh, two GPIO pins uh, for enable and reset and uh, it uh, also has 3.3 uh, volts for a power supply so this is uh, what a screenshot uh, of uh, ddns uh, access looks like and uh, also you can access this uh, reading using uh, your IP, ip address on your local area network so you can access this sensor from anywhere in the world using uh, DDNS or IP on your local area network. Uh, this is the detail uh, of the sensor. So if you see uh, this green LED flashing, it means that uh, the uh, STM32 uh, is reading the data from the humidity sensor. And uh, if you see this uh, blue LED flashing, uh, it means that uh, this ESP8266 uh, is communicating. And uh, I was making the whole uh, library for this uh, relative humidity sensor. And this was uh, in Chinese, these uh, registers. So I had to translate it first. So here we have it fully translated. Uh, so let's move to this software part it's more interesting so if you want to use this uh, IoT sensor as it is you just need to uh, modify only this single line uh, with uh, your or your own uh, Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi password and uh, that's it and uh, this main loop uh, handles three things independently so first uh, every 30 seconds in my case I update uh, I read the humidity data and uh, when 
a request from a web browser is sent, uh, I call this message handler. And just for the safety, uh, I restart the whole system every 24 hours. So the microcontroller or the ESP8266 module firmware uh, won't get stuck. So this way, uh, this sensor should run forever with uh, 24 hour restart. So that's it. So let's move to this uh, message handler. So this message handler does two things. Uh, when a GET request uh, is sent from a web browser, it uh, sends back the web contents and uh, closes uh, the connection and uh, that's it. And when something happens to Wi-Fi connection uh, on its own, uh, when the connection fails or it is disconnected, it tries to reconnect again. So that's it. So this send data uh, function sends back the response when uh, a GET request uh, was uh, received uh, from the web browser. So first uh, I send back this uh, 200 OK. Uh, that says the connection is OK. Then the content length uh, of the upcoming uh, uh, HTML code, which is this one. Uh, and then I send uh, also to web browser that uh, the content type is uh, HTML. Uh, afterwards, uh, you have one extra, extra empty line. Uh, and then you send uh, back this string, which is the whole uh, HTML code, which is this one. So uh, this HTML code says uh, this uh, title, uh, which is uh, on this uh, web tab. So that's it. And it also wants to auto refresh uh, every 30 seconds. And afterwards, uh, I have this uh, body of the of the page. So that's the whole thing that I'm sending. Uh, that's why it looks so simple. So uh, that's the whole thing. So you can modify it. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, this is the simplest uh, web server that you can make. So let's move on. So when it comes to interrupts, uh, I'm using this UART peripheral that receives uh, the messages from the ESP8266 module. And uh, this timer tree uh, counts uh, every second. And uh, if it is uh, every 30 seconds, then this measure humidity flag uh, is set to one uh, that uh, triggers this uh, reading and when uh, a message is received so uh, when there are enough uh, of these uh, end of line characters uh, these four in a row uh, it means that uh, the message was successfully uh, received uh, from the ESP8266 module to the STM32 and uh, in that case, this uh, message handler is launched. And uh, these seconds, uh, which are over here, uh, are also over here. And uh, every 24 hours, as I mentioned, I restart the whole system. And here I have another uh, timer. Uh, it is uh, just a timeout. So when the ESP8266 uh, starts to uh, send a string, but for some reason uh, the stream of, of the characters is interrupted for a while, uh, then I launched this uh, message handler anyway. So that's uh, as simple as that. And uh, in this code, I have just uh, these two my custom libraries, so I've been uh, writing these from scratch. 
so this library uh, is for the relative humidity sensor this is the source code uh, of it here is the library for the ESP8266 that uh, has all these functions uh, this has been explained uh, in my previous projects uh, many times it works the same way and uh, I have explained already how it all works so that's it uh, you can replace your sensor with something else so let's say with a temperature sensor with a pressure sensor uh, ambient light sensor whatever you want uh, the HTML code uh, is also quite simple uh, I've learned this uh, just uh, quite quickly from the internet so it's uh, nothing uh, complicated so I hope it was a good inspiration uh, so let's explain the last uh, thing which is the DDNS setting so if you want to access your uh, IoT sensor from anywhere uh, in the world then you need to have at least uh, uh, the DNS setup so I have used uh, noip.com uh, and uh, you just need to register there and create your uh, host name and then you need to go to your uh, Wi-Fi router and uh, set up your dynamic DNS uh, client setting you just need to put here your credentials such as your username and password and what, what uh, service uh, provider you are using uh, as well as the host name and uh, then you also need to uh, set the IP address uh, of your target device to be uh, static uh, not to be changed so uh, that's what you need to do and the last thing you need to set up in your router is uh, port forwarding it means that uh, when the request uh, comes from the outside uh, uh, to the router uh, the router needs to know where the request should be forwarded to uh, in this case to this ESP8266 module so that's this rule uh, you have plenty of tutorials online how to make it work but uh, in any case uh, if you will successfully uh, set up your DDNS then you will be able to uh, read your data from anywhere in the world and uh, if you are happy just to have it at home then you can just type it your own IP address uh, of your uh, local uh, area network now of the device of course uh, and you will be able to access uh, those data as well so that's it uh, I hope you've learned a lot so uh, this is it and uh, I would be glad if you will use this as a template so that's all for today Thanks for watching. Bye.